Good evening, everybody. Good evening to you, Elda. Uh, thank you for hosting us. Welcome. I'm humbled to be here as a student and uh, as one of the presenters of the day. The reason why we are talking about music is because younger people are the biggest numbers in the choir and uh, in, the, in, the, in the song service. They are choristers, they are pianists, they are involved in music, they are singers. And therefore, I want to tell you that uh, it's not a small issue because music is part of us as the church. And I can tell you that even other people are also involved in singing, politically, even which doctors like singing. I want to tell you that uh, what the pastor has just said cannot be completed today. Music is a very big issue, and you may not be able to present everything today, but by God's grace, we shall be handling something. I want to thank Pastor Sintongo, my senior, for covering this. That should be voice, Ruthie's voice. Okay. Uh, let me request Brother Henry Kajumbi to play our screen for the next presentation. Henry, please go to the slideshow and show us a full screen. As Kajumbi does that, I think he has not done it, but he will do it. I want to say that the choristers have got a lot of assistance needed from us, and uh, we have talked about them. However, let's talk about uh, the Adventist philosophy of music. Um, the philosophy of music and the theology of music talks about our beliefs as Adventists. What do we believe in and what does the Bible talk about uh, when it comes to music? What makes us unique from other people? And uh, please, Henry, could you please show us the, the next screens, please? Henry, click on enable editing uh, on that yellow. Yes, yes, yes. Notification. Click on enable editing, then you can press F5 to present to go to presentation settings. Okay, as Henry does that, I wanted also to remind us that uh, the choristers have got a lot of assistance needed from us, just as we we have certain errors we commit as choristers. Uh, sometimes a chorister will tell you, um, let's stand up and sing when it's not actually time for us to stand. A chorister may insult you like someone has just said on the chat, yes. And that's why we are learning now to do away with some of those uh, issues. Now, as the Kajumbi gets ready, some of the things we need to remind ourselves are these. Kajumbi, enable editing, then you can be able to share the screen fully. Enable editing. Oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, where, do, where, where do I find enable editing? Look at the yellow color, the yellow strip. There is a small word there written, enable editing. Have you seen protected view? The yellow, where your cursor is, up there. Okay. There, thank you. Good. Now go back to, now I can to slide issue. Okay. Thank you.
Okay. Show us a full slide show, please. Can you do that? Uh, that's what I have done. No, uh, we are not seeing that. We are seeing a presentation not yet being shown fully. Everything is not enabled yet. Enable editing. Click on enable editing. Okay, may I request Kuruga? You'll forgive me today, my machine has a, an issue. That's why I'm requesting the technical guys to help us on that. Okay, as they get ready, Pastor has talked about music administration, and we are talk about philosophy and theology of music. But there's another part we shall not teach today. It is called the art of music. That is how to write and read and play music, interpreting the music symbols, how do you tell the keys, the beats, and whatsoever. Beautiful. Kajumbi, that's beautiful. Thank you. Take yeah. us to the next slide. We are going to move faster. Okay. Uh, those verses guided us when pastor was beginning. Let's continue because of time. Now, Let's continue, please. We shall handle the art of music at our churches or when God guides us uh, next time. All right, let's start from there. When we look at the philosophy of music, we needed to first know historically what did the really music look like in the Old Testament. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 4 shows that Levites were appointed to be ministers before the ark of the Lord. And they had three roles, to invoke, to thank, and praise the Lord. And who was that one? The God of Israel. It means, therefore, initially, the singers were priests. So you may ask yourself a question, are you a priest also? Yes, you are, because Peter says, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and therefore you also qualify to sing. Let's go to the next slide, sir. Our next slide shows that all the Levites were musically prepared, and they were also prepared spiritually, meaning that every singer must also be spiritually prepared. They were financially supported, meaning that the singers even music in our church must show that the church has injected money in it. It is so ashamed sometimes when you see the church has got an event, it ends up hiring, it ends up hiring machines. And lo and behold, these machines were playing a disco last night. And today the church has hired these machines to use them to win souls. And at last, we don't win the souls, thinking that the machines don't need to be consecrated or dedicated to the church. And therefore, financially, we must support our singers, and even the machines should be put to support the music ministry and whatever we can do. So to minister musical in the Old Testament was a great privilege and it was also a most responsible service. Thank you, Kajumbi, you can go on. And this one also means that if we are to look at this, it also means that this responsible service was not for everybody, was for a few. It is in the New Testament when, where we are enjoying all the peace that anyone can become that. Keep pressing, Mr. Kajumbi. We need to know that God created the music and he has woven music in his own creation. That's why Job 38 says that in the morning, the stars could sing and the angels shouted for joy. When you read the book of Revelation, it talks about still the music. Because of time, this presentation will be given to you. And uh, please, you will uh, uh, follow from there. But I wanted us to quote the 
verse of Job 38, verse 7. Uh, let us note something more. In the next note, as we are reading, we need to know that music has got power. What power is that? Music can touch and move us with the power that goes beyond our own words. Sometimes music can lift our beings, and sometimes the music can take our being, our spiritual life into a bad spirit again. So music has got two sides. It has got the power to do evil and the power to do good. Henry, thank you. Let's move because of time. We need to know that music will always impact our lives in either negative way or positive way. And that's why point three we are saying music is not morally and spiritually neutral. It is not. Uh, Henry, let's tell there a bit. Music may move us to the exalt the human experience. And sometimes the music, the prince of evil, that is Satan, can use it to degrade us. You've seen on introductions when music is being played and you see an Adventist dancing than an Adventist and all the members wonder what has been happening to this person. Sometimes music can teach people bad manners, like uh, we've ever seen people who have sung songs and say, other people have sung many songs anyway. You know that. That means music is not morally neutral. It has power. Thank you, Henry. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, after knowing that, LNG White has got some statements she has brought to help us in the guidance of this philosophy of music. She says that music, when ab not abused, it is a great blessing. But when music is put to the wrong use, it is a terrible curse. And let me tell you, friends, even as Adventists, we have reached a moment where we have put our music to a wrong use. Or we have reached a moment and we used ourselves musically in a wrong way. But if we rightly use the music in the right way, Ellen White says, it becomes a precious gift of God because it will lift the thoughts to the high and the noble themes to inspire and elevate the souls. And what are we trying to say on this point? That good music should elevate our souls. To who? To God. If I listen to any Adventist music, and it does not touch my soul, then it ends up touching my body. That means there is something wrong with that type of music. Thank you. Music, when it comes to the power of song, Ellen G. White says this, that it is one of the most effective means of impressing our heart when we sing and with the spiritual truth. And it means that we need to use this music to help the hearts that have been hard pressed and when it comes to this, the heart can change and get new courage and be glad. Thank you, Henry. Now, Ellen G. White continues to give us some more quotations here. What does she say? She says that music is as a part of religious service. In fact, singing is an act of worship just as prayer is. What does it mean? If you find us singing, you commit a very big crime to stop us because something more important has come. I'll give you a scenario where we usually have choristers leading the congregation into music and an elder comes with a very important announcements. I can tell you that announcements are not part of worship according to the Bible. We can worship without announcement. But sometimes we can end up seeing that a chorister is a chest and the congregation is stopped from singing, forgetting that singing is as prayer. If you found me praying, can you stop me? No. Therefore, when you find me singing, when you find a congregation singing, and you're a big guy, you are the pastor, you are elder, you come with something you think is more important than this one, tap the chorister, let the chorister welcome you respectively. Henry, continue. Thank you. 
we must prepare to join the heavenly choir. That's what N.G. White says. That when the, and the echo of the angels is sing, they awaken the earthly homes and hearts. And when they are singing, they have to draw the, heaven, uh, the members towards heaven. Heaven's communion begins on earth. We learn how to praise God from here. Thank you, Henry. Um, we need to remember this, that Jesus is coming and we have also to say no to the ungodliness uh, musically. Um, there was, a, I think that was Pastor Bujingo, he was saying, Omulokole Tamala Garia. But I want to tell you also this, Omulokole Tamala Gaiba. You cannot just sing just like that. Just as you can just, you know, not just eat anyhow, or in a, in a, a haphazard way. That means you should also sing carefully. And Seventh Adventists will believe to preach that God and Jesus is coming back. And that is a worldwide proclamation. And after we are doing this, we have to prepare the soon coming of Christ by saying no to the ungodliness. I want to emphasize this before we go to the next screen. I have to emphasize this, that there is no moment we are expected to be ungodly. I've been to ceremonies and you see people telling you that elderly verse today, it is not a burial ceremony. Let us enjoy life. Elderly verse, let us pray something enticing. In other words, they're saying, Elder, let us worship the devil at least for the moment. There's nothing expected of us as members of the Heavenly Father to do that. Thank you, Henry. Uh huh. So we have a challenge. When you read Titus 2 12 and 13, we are challenged to say no to ungodliness as we are waiting for the blessed hope of the glorious appearing of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Henry, thank you. Yes. Guideline number six says this. Gospel must affect music. What does this one mean? We mean that the music we sing must first change our lives before it changes other people. Please host to help me. There's another teacher. So while realizing this, we are requesting you that we, we, we as members, the music must first impact the individuals that are singing that music. And that's very, very important. We cannot sing about marriages when we avoid marriages. <laughs> we cannot sing about baptism when we are not baptized. We cannot sing about offertory when we are not even the books of the treasury. We need to sing, we need to, to, to allow what we are singing about to impact our lives first. Thank you. Henry, thank you so much. Um, now, we come to something that some people ask themselves a lot. This is called sacred music. What is sacred music? Sacred music is that music that referred to as religious music. It is focusing, it is written and sung, and it is focusing on biblical and Christian themes. That's what we call sacred music. On the other side, when we meet sacred music, it does not mean that every sacred music is acceptable by Adventists. In most cases, the music which is composed and intended for worship service, evangelistic meeting, private devotion, may be vocal or instrumental. That is the sacred music. Thank you. Um, we need to know that not every sacred or religious music may be acceptable for an Adventist life. Sacred music should evoke 
secular associations or invite conform should not should not should not evoke secular associations it should not even invite conformity to the behavioral patterns of the world or even thinking or even acting now this is where problems come some of our singers sing gospel or religious music but they bring the patterns of the world in them or they act like that let's move on and now on the the other side we have what we call secular music henry take us to secular music definition now secular music is that music composed not for worship or even private devotion but it speaks of common issues of life and the basic human emotions it comes out of our every being every day it expresses what the humans react towards their surrounding that is life love the world where the lord has placed us do you know the song <laughs> mama esther thank you for muting yourself um secular music this one can be talking about the world and what we are going through there's a song that talks about oklima by gabriel ministries we have the national anthem that is a, a secular song it talks about us as a country so should we say it is an evil song we've said the evil can be even in what we are calling sacred music so even the evil sometimes can be in secular music let's go on henry so what we are saying that music can be morally uplifting or degrading although it does not directly praise or adore god nevertheless it could have a legitimate place in the life of a christian that's what we are calling secular music some of the pieces of secular music can have a legitimate life in a christian they can be lifting some people's morals but also we have to know that some of the secular pieces degrade the morals so in this selection of principles we have to discuss what principles are supposed to guide an adventist youth when is choosing either secular or sacred music henry thank you take us now let's go through these nine principles quickly and we shall call it a day now the music that a christian enjoy enjoys should be regulated by the following principles whether at home whether in your daily life whether at church whether you are writing a song by the way sometimes people ask us questions that are uh, uh, how do we differentiate good music from bad music we are trying to explain that today and one of them is this all music the christian listens to or performs or composes whether sacred or secular should glorify god henry thank you take us to the next you people you should pray for me bobby wine is visiting in bale and i am in the city tear gas might begin soon i've started hearing it pray that i <laughs> i finish my presentation before it reaches my eyes now let's go to two all of the music a christian listens to number one we've said all composers should glorify god that's number one number two all the music a christian listens to whether he's performing or is composing whether he's conducting whether it's what whether it's secular or sacred should be the noblest and the best the word noble and the best are both related and i think should we should relate it to pure purity 
Now, these two principles are the foundations of other guiding principles that a Christian, Adventist young person, should be following when he's looking for guidance in music. Henry, we can continue now. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, the next music, <laughs> music number three, we are saying the music that guides us should be characterized by quality, balance, appropriateness, authenticity. Music should we should remember that music fosters our spiritual, psychological, and social sensitivity to our intellectual growth. Number three is trying to tell us that let's sing the music which is balanced. It should be appropriate, meaning that it is matching the situation. The barrio is not having the baptism song. Someone mute somebody there. So music fosters our spiritual and physical growth. What we are saying in number three, that music should be balanced. It should be authentic. What are we talking about authenticity? It should be, or, it should be having a sense of belonging. It should be original. We have a generation of younger people who are now singing. We have a, there's a song that says, no woman, no cry. No woman, no cry. So you find someone writing and says, no Jesus, no life. So that's not authentic. You're trying to create something different there. Number four says that uh, it appeals to both the music you're trying to listen to or sing should appeal to both intellect and the emotions and it should impact the body in what? It is saying in the positive way. The music you're listening to should not impact the body in the wrong way. When you feel you're listening to any music or you're seeing some music, which found you when you're seated, it makes your body stand up, shake your head. Sometimes the hand follows and the head. That music is not taking you towards the cross to confess your sins. No, it's not helping you discover how small you are before God. Actually, it is making you look to be very, very big and God's grace disappears. Number five is music reveals the creativity that it draws from quality melodies. Quality. The Levites could spend months training in music. These days, some people write songs today. In the evening, they're on stage. One word is lost. The congregation laughs. The singers laugh at themselves. So, if we harmonize, it is supposed to be using harmonies and interesting in, a, in an artistic way. It should employ the rhythm and complements. Thank you, Henry. Can we move on? Uh, time is not on our side. This presentation is like the insurance presentation. It has the queries. <laughs> uh, vocal music. Now let's go to the vocal music. This is where we have uh, the acapella issues and others. Vocal music employs the lyrics that positively stimulate intellectual abilities as well as our emotions and our willpower. So good lyrics are creative, rich in content. So this is how our music should be. And of good composition. They should focus, the music we are writing, the lyrics we are, we are writing should be, should focus on the positive and reflects the moral values. Music should educate and uplift. And music should correspond with the sound found with the biblical teaching. Um, currently, we have singers who have gone away from that. Let's go to number seven. Musical and lyrical elements should work together harmoniously to influence thinking and behavior in harmony with the biblical values. 
in other words, whatever we are talking about here is glorifying the God, the will of God to have the noblest, to have the purest. Number eight, the music we support, we compose, we listen to, should maintain judicious balance of spiritual, intellectual, and emotional elements. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Henry. Take us, take us, please. Um, number nine, we should recognize and acknowledge the contribution of different cultures. Now, this is where the cultural issues come. We've been, I've been listening to some writers and arguments who say Adventists are forcing us to take the American style of singing or the Western style of singing in order to call it biblical. No, I've never gone to the US, but I've ever tried to listen to the music that comes from the US. The music from the Western countries is also mixed. We have the raps, we have the dance halls, we have the jazz, we have the rock, we have the rhythm and blues. Those are all Western. But in our cultural norms, we also appreciate that when uh, Mugisu is composing a song, it might be very hard for such a person to compose a song that goes slow. It might have it, it might end up having a faster rhythm because of the culture. And we are saying as the Adventist family, the general conference recognizes worshiping and the contribution of cultures towards worshiping God. The musical forms and instruments vary greatly in the whole world. When you go to Arua, you'll find people playing Adungu and you has never seen that, you may end up judging them. Why are they playing Adungu? Uh, if I'm to um, talk about, um, I'm to talk about instruments, I have to tell you that instruments are like our tongue. The tongue can kill, the tongue can save. So if we are to use instruments, the guidance we get that they must be regulated by the controller, someone playing them. Just as you may not control your microphone, you let it look into the speaker, it will create an echo. Some of us even slap the microphones in order to speak. But what we are saying here is that uh, cultures differ. You may go to Saudi Arabia and find the Adventists there are singing la ilaha illallah without putting Muhammad Rasulullah and they put another word Isa Rasulullah and you say what is this? So as Adventists accepted uh, Christ the church is very sensitive and it allows it accepts the differences because who created these differences? It is God. It is God who created me to be darker black and created another red Indian, created another Muzungu somewhere. And those colors you're seeing in different people in the world also are seen musically somewhere. However, the principles must be there to guide us in singing. Henry, take us to the next screen. Um, Mm -hmm. Was that our next screen, Henry? Because I'm also trying to follow you here. Okay, let, yeah, thank you, thank you. Now, um, as Saint Adventist, music making means to choose the best and the above all to draw close to our Creator and the Lord to glorify Him. So we need to rise to this challenge and see that we have a viable alternative, musical vision, and to see that it is part of our holistic and prophetic message. I, I, I rarely get the prophetic songs from most of our singers, much as most of our preachers are reminding us that we are in the last time days 
uh, we need to blend our 28 fundamental beliefs in the music. So the Adventist musical contribution should be a witness to the world regarding the awaiting of Christ is coming. Now let's run quickly into the church manual. Henry, thank you. Take us into the church manual and we we'll pick some items there that we need to take home. And um, okay. In the church manual, page 149, we find this quotation that music was made to serve a holy purpose, to lift the thoughts that which is pure, noble. It is a quotation from the book called Patriarchs and Prophets, page 594. So the music an Adventist is supposed to see is the music that will uplift the thoughts and elevate our soul and give gratitude to God. Thank you, Henry. Uh, give us something else. Time is chasing us. We said that one, that music, singing is a religious service. We got that. We explained that in details. Thank you. We can continue. Um, our next is that music is one of the highest arts from the church manual, that quotation is there. So good music not only gives us pleasure, but should elevate our minds and cultivate our finest qualities. So God often has used the spiritual songs to touch the hearts of sinners and lead them to repentance. Uh, that is very important for us to take home. Henry, you can give us our next quotation there. Mm. But on the contrary, we learn from the church manual, page 149, that the best music breaks down morality and it draws us away from our relationship with God. So as youths, as senior youth leaders, we need to remind our parents that even the music we play at home, the music we choose on the TV screens, the music we carry on our phones, even the callback tunes. There is a time I called my pastor. He had a chikankane callback tune. I had to call him again and tell him, Pastor, tell the network, whether I tell MTN to change that music because it is done accidentally. So he said, Moses, I didn't know about this. It is you who has to know and thank you for telling me. So friends, we need to, 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 to learn that. Take us, Henry, quickly. Okay, we should exercise great care in the choice of music in our homes. I think I've talked about that. Social gatherings, that's another big problem. Anyway, this is a big problem. Let me tell you, friends, being single, majorly when you are at a marriage age, is painful. So sometimes you find someone who has suffered with singlehood, he has gotten somebody to marry, and during all of the marriage ceremonies, there's no gospel song or godly song played the devil's songs are played in our social gatherings in most cases. Go to schools. There are some schools that say are, they are church, what? Church related. And they are great dancers. There are even some that we failed one time to, to present them. By the way, let me also mention this. As you plan, host, could you mute that guy? One time, President Museveni invited the Abachwanga, those are Adventists. And they took the certain singing group. He even asked them, did you call Adventists or who are these? Because the way they were singing, even the president knew. They were not singing like the Adventists he knew. So our schools are very funny these days. Not all of them, but some. You look at the way they are singing, I say, are they going to sell their students for a sexy show or what? What's going on? You look at the way some of our singers are dressed. They are no longer putting on fitting clothes. They are putting on squeezing clothes. All of the body parts are under pressure. And you are also under pressure singing. Oh, God. So any melody partaking the nature of jazz, rock, related hybrid, or any language of expressing foolish or trivial sentiments, 
trivial sentiments will be shunned. That is the church manual. You can see how the church manual is very tough on this issue. Thank you, Henry. Let's run quickly. I don't know how much time we are left with. Okay, okay. I can see it's about 4.30. Okay. The power of music. We talked about that. I think let's skip that. Let's skip that. Henry, let's go to the next screen show. Uh, music should have the beauty. Let the voices be lifted. Call to your aid, if practicable, instrument music. And let the glorious harmony ascend to God acceptable. Someone was trying to ask in the chat room, what about your instruments? The church manual guides us that if you need instruments, call to your aid. Get somebody who will pray, play the instruments and he knows how uh, 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 the, the Adventist machines are regulated. There, there's this problem. Some of us go to studios and record. And we can go to Swangs Avenue. Those who produce the radio and weasel, those guys who produce Bebe Cool to record for us the music. But with these uh, ganja smokers, they don't know even the rules that govern our machines and whatever. And the way they record the thing, the music comes so loud, not balanced. And you want us to listen to that music. Sometimes when you take such music, even to the general conference, it is rejected. I've seen Ugandan choirs visit Kenya or Tanzania and they are rejected because they are forgetting the principles and the philosophy of Adventist music. So uh, let's, let's learn to be very, very careful to this. Thank you, Henry. Let's go on. Uh -huh. We need to sing with the spirit and understanding. That's why we gave you those verses there. It is saying that in the meetings that are held, we are not to depend on worldly singers and theatrical display to awaken the interest of the people we are singing it to. There's this dramatic way of beginning songs when choirs gather in different congregations. Another one comes from the other corner, another one comes from the other one, and a boo -boo 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 something comes and then the song is introduced. Yeah, people are happy. But if we can remember that whenever we sing, we are singing to the Lord, then we should stop impressing people. You will never please the people. And the Bible says, woe to that person who trusts the people. Ah, okay. How can those who have not interest in the word of God, that's what we're talking about. N.G. White asks us that question. How do we pick those who are not interested in Adventism to record our music? How do we pick those who are not interested in uh, our faith to give us their machines. And sometimes when they give us their machines, they don't even want us to play our music. I've ever seen a DJ who has given our songs and refused to sing and play in So we need whoever is involved in the music to be knowing the Adventist understanding and explanation and philosophy of music. How can the heavenly choir join the music that is only a form? So those are queries we have to ask ourselves as we continue. Henry, time is not on our side. Uh -huh. The singing is not always to be done by a few. This one means that N.G. White and the church manual, this quotation say, if there is a singing, let's promote congregational singing. There are days when we host many choirs. Then the whole congregation keeps quiet goes for a music show. But when it is a day of worship, unless it is a music launch, the other days of worship, when we gather, let's promote congregational singing. Each department can have music leaders. I think that one, uh, Pastor St. Tongo explained, the two are especially emphasized. Which departments are those? According to the church man, you go back, Henry, go back, go back, go back, please. Uh, the Sabbath school and youth ministry, at least you should have music leaders because the youths are the sources of the customers that make choirs. Go on, please, Henry. Uh, we just heard some other sounds of tear gas. 
when do we select these people? Yes, Pastor Sentongo talked about the music coordinators and the directors. The church should take great care in selecting these people. Why? Those who are thoroughly consecrate and provide appropriate music for all church worship services and meetings. Secular music that is of questionable nature should never be introduced into our services. Henry, thank you. Now let's run faster, faster, and we'll conclude this because the questions are come um, and we shall answer some of them. So music leader should work closely. That one you can leave it because the, the, we've talked about leaders so much during uh, whatever. Uh, that one also leave it because the pastor Sentong has explained it. Uh, That one continue. Yeah, that one, members, that one, Pastor Sentong taught it, talked about it. So we shall be answering some things in the questions. So uh -huh, let's, let's emphasize that one, that one there. Churches may have multiple choirs. Now this is where the problem is. Some of us think if I am from Mbale Central, there must be only one choir called Mbale Central Church Choir. No, even in Bale Central Children's Choir is a church choir. Even in Bale Central Youth Choir is a church choir. And every church choir belongs to the church, is monitored by the church, supervised by the church, funded by the church, and supported by, by the church. Reports and everything there. So therefore, with the church can have many choirs. Thank you. Let's go. Selecting musicians. The church manual says, it is important for the church to exercise care when it is selecting singers. Who chooses who belongs who to join the choir? It is the church. They should be members of the church, the Sabbath school or the Adventist Youth Society. That's well explained. Go. Mm -hmm. Because they occupy a conspicuous place in the church service, Singers should be an example of modesty, decorum in their appearance and the dress. That the church manual, page 95, choir members should be appearing in a modest way and dressed well. And they are saying choir robes are optional. It is not a must where the church is not able to have what we call a vigandula or the choir robes. But it is beautiful. And let's work towards that for those who don't have. But we should not blame those who do not have. But whoever comes should be like that. We saw that when Pastor Sentong was teaching us. Thank you. Mm. OK, let's talk about some mistakes here, which our leaders in the music or, or as a church will do. Number one, when a chorus is singing, Instead of singing in soprano, he sings in alto. A chorus is supposed to sing in one voice, and one lead voice is called the soprano voice. Next mistake, uh, we lack of coordination with the instrumentalists. Yeah, sometimes the, the instrumentalist gives you a, given, a different key, the chorus begins in a different key. Sometimes the chorus begins and the instrumentalist has to follow, running to follow him. Please, when you are a chorister and you are in a church where there is an instrumentalist, it is the instrumentalist who gives you the key and you join. But it is not vice versa that you get the key and you join. Then there's this mistake where we tell people, whoever has a good voice, let him begin. No, you the chorister, you are the one to begin with the song, unless there is no chorus in your church. Sometimes this problem number three or mistake number three is that if we chorister too fast and sometimes too slow. Mm -hmm. A song like, when peace like a river attendeth my way. Oh, a, an energetic chorister can come. When peace is like a river attendeth. <laughs> faster, faster. So lack of music department working tools. That's another big mistake. Some churches don't have the departmental tools, all of them, name them. 
instruments playing during church service. When a pastor is preaching, he's making a point. Don't bring this theatrical Pentecostal style that when the pastor is preaching, he says, please come to Jesus. Then the pianist plays. No, 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 no. Let the people concentrate to listen to one person. Next mistake, mimicking or miming. This is very common. Where choirs stand on stage, they deceive us that they are singing when actually it is the CD or a flash being played and the mics are off and they're telling us they're singing. Let's go to the last mistakes uh, we usually have. Sometimes we can, as MCs or choristers, we can say, let's invite the singers to entertain us. No, singers sing to the Lord. We invite music performance. That was a great performance as we are waiting for something else. It's like singing is a by the way, as you are waiting for a major thing. Singing is also as major as preaching, as major as prayer. Interrupting people when they are singing. Please wait, let's do this. That is a very big mistake. Um, last one. Requesting for a few stanzas. Okay, so stanza number one and number two, no. Singing is a journey. A journey that cannot be stopped until it ends. So you cannot skip. When I'm going to Jinja, I have to pass through Namutumba, so you cannot say Mbale and Jinja, no. I have to pass through that. So I must sing all those stanzas. Henry, can you give us our second last on that part? Okay. That was marking, hey, first go back. <laughs> That marks the philosophy of music. Now, Madam Esther told me to speak briefly about uh, the um, a cappella issue. So let's discuss a cappella in two slides and we are done. We are done, don't worry friends, we shall be done. Um, a cappella is one of the most loved style of music by younger people. And it means singing without machines. Now, some groups, that sing with their voices, again, start to imitate the machines. That one, again, they start, it's like saying, I am going to walk from Mbale to Jinja, walking without boarding a car. Then I start as I walk. So I've said I'm not going to use the machines, but I end up using the machines mimicking the machines or emulating the machines. Next slide. Uh, so these a cappella guys have arguments. Why should they sing without machines? Actually, there's a church called Church of Christ. It does not promote playing any instrument. They sing only without machines. Now, all of the a cappella guys say that Ephesians 5.19 says, Speak to one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise with the voices and making melody with your heart. And can you get what you're saying? Making a melody with your heart. And um, they said those are some of the verses that are, are promoting the a cappella, which is beautiful. But the instrument here being chosen is the heart, not again the mouth bubbling and boom, 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 boom. It's not there in this verse here. So the voice should be clear saying us something. Please take us to the next slide. We shall share some of the verses here in our next year, uh, whatever. So we realize that in the, in the research shows that the apostolic church, that the church that came after Jesus had gone to heaven, didn't use the instruments. It's not quoted anywhere. That's why James 13, 5, 13 says that, is anyone among you afflicted? he should pray. Is anyone among you glad at heart? He should sing praise to God. So some of the people who promote a cappella say these are some of the verses that promote us. It is a command, Ephesians 5, 19, that we should sing for the Lord. Uh, there are many examples in these books here. Um, thank you. Uh, Henry, take us to the next. Those verses, because of time, you read them. Now, what is good a cappella? Uh, we try to arrange something here for you to define good a cappella. 
good a cappella, you will find that the singers are singing these hymns and praises using their voices, not imitating machines. They don't sing secular songs. They are choirs and they are singing only songs of praise. They are not involved in self-exalting competitions. For example, East Africa has got talent. We have visit Uganda Capella competitions. We have what, what. Mm -hmm. They uplift the soul, not the body. There is a certain piece of a capella, my friend, you can listen to. Uh oh. And you say, my God, is this part of us? And you will discover that <laughs> it, is, it, it is really something funny. Uh, there is a song that uh, uh, some friends sang, which he talks about life. Um, when I get time, but I don't think I have time. Another record of Guda Capella, members are made up from one faith or one congregation, one church, one denomination. They write most of their songs, these are capella guys. Much as they may sing our hymns, but you'll find they are also writing their own songs. There you can define, yeah, I think this is Buddha Capella. Now what is Bada Capella? Bada Capella is when you listen to some singers, they sing so well on the harmony, and there comes a bum 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 thing, uh, the bassing guy, or the vocal <laughs> drum set, boom, 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 throughout. And this music, what we may call rongo a cappella, lifts the body, not the soul. No one will listen to this song and says, oh, I feel I'm near to God. I want to be baptized. Oh, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior. You hear someone say, this a cappella is good. I feel like shaking. I feel like dancing. So it's not lifting the soul. When you hear that type of music and it's still a cappella, just know that it's a wrong a cappella. There's good a cappella and bad a cappella. So some groups in the bad a cappella, some groups are not from the same faith. You'll find the two Adventists, two Pentecostals, and one Anglican. They have formed the choir. And that is very hard to supervise. And they don't care about where, what these other people believe in. They are just sharing the, 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 the passion of singing. They have no definite church, defined church. You ask them, what is your address? Uh, for us, we are church members. You know, we are Adventists. Who is your pastor to contact? Uh, we, man, we are for us Adventists. You know, what's all about the request? These bad a cappella groups, some of them, sing both the secular and the gospel. You will find someone singing uh, Juliana Kanyomo's song, as well as singing uh, the hymns. Then you will start knowing these people mm -mm, are questionable. They are mixing evil and good. Remember, singing in the Bible was for priests, and we are also priests. That's what Peter says, that we are a royal priesthood. Henry, can we say how we can end this? Thank you. God bless you. I'm done. I'm ready to listen to the questions if they exist because I know there are many. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elda, for that wonderful presentation. Yeah, Amen. ladies and gentlemen, I guess this time we have to ask some questions so that the pastor and the elder can respond to them. Yeah, so I'm first going to read those ones that we are put in the chat even earlier in the first <coughs> presentation so that we, we can respond to them first. Yeah, then I'll also to check those who are able to give comments so that we can... Uh, I think of them too. Yeah, there's someone who's giving a comment, like some of these choristers, pastor, have a lot of pride. When you tell them to chorista, they say that you should be, they, they, say, should, they, they say they should be pampered to do so, that they only chorista when in the spirit. Yeah, I think this is a, like a music, when the music director is telling the choristers to do th their work in that case. <clears throat> So then uh, 
someone was saying some of these choristers pastor have a lot of pride when you tell them to oh sorry yeah i think it was the, same, the same comment thing. written for the second yes yeah then uh, we talked about uh, the voices yeah someone was saying very interesting about the, vo- the voices sung by a choir member i thought to, it didn't matter the voice when one transfers membership Yeah, that was from the first presentation that we had. Yeah, then uh, there is someone saying, yeah, that some choristers, they do criticize people too much. Yeah, at times isolating some individuals that they are not good at at singing and then they tell them to keep quiet. Then uh, a question here is saying, yeah, what about a chorister who keeps quiet because the congregation is singing not to his own expectation <clears throat> talk about it pastor all right uh, pastor, pastor. Oerda, could you please uh, thank you can you hear me yes can i you can hear me my brother okay let me come back to the camera let's go handle the chorister issues once and we see one the church board should elect the chorister it is very very important but when you let the chorister elect himself or herself that's what will happen because he knows no one regulates him he says i'm not in the mood that's number one number two uh, the other issue was um, what about the people who speak and isolate people now it congregational singing is not a moment of judgment There are some people who who use congregational singing to arrest people's mistakes. If that is wrong, if we say let us sing, let the people sing in all of the mistakes they can do, so long as they are praising their Lord. The time we handle mistakes in singing is when it is a special time to teach music, the art of music. Maybe after lunch, and you say, friends, there is a common problem I've seen. Can we use ten or five minutes to correct this? but we cannot point out and isolate and sing out members during congregational thing, singing. That is not okay. And a chorister who does not have time to chorister, then he has automatically refused the role that was given to him. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much, Pastor. Then... Uh, no, I just wanted to, wanted to supplement. Yes, yeah, I just wanted to supplement on what Moses has said. Uh, it's good that all choristers are singers. They are not leaders. And they need to know that they are singing like the congregation is singing. It's only the duty of the music conductor who leads, in, in, who, leads who guides, who unifies the singers. That is his responsibility. But the chorister is just a singer like any other person. Then he needs to be uh, as royal uh, uh, as a priest. Therefore, he needs to handle the, the congregation the best he could. Because now he's a chorister, he knows how to sing, and he's assisting these other people to know how to sing. Therefore, he shouldn't be rude. It should be exemplary. He should be kind because he's leading us who don't know. And yet, if he doesn't do that, we will not comply. At times, they will even give reports that he should be he should be discontinued from leading worship in the music. Therefore, a chorister should be as royal as a priest. Now, let let me also submit this that for issues of choristers, the music coordinator is expected the music coordinator is expected to choose choristers at different instances to avoid monotony of having only one chorister. Because we are using that forum to train other younger people into serving as choristers. We can have a chorister for the Sabbath school. We can have a chorister for a church at worship through music. We can have a chorister for divine service and we have another chorister for the afternoon. The moment you tie yourself to one chorister, you have a challenge. This chorister may be going to worship with a fellow singer in another place, 
maybe to learn more each, uh, about each other or for another project. We should do that chorister be missing at church. Who will it be choristering? So we need to have a list of choristers, have a rota that so and so will be serving this Sabbath. Thank you. Okay, uh, Elder, the other question is you could respond to, like what the difference between music choristers and, and conductors and then dancing and entertainment in our churches? The difference between choristers and the conductors has been spelled out. We are saying a, a, a chorister leads in singing, while a conductor is one who conducts and leads and guides whatever is supposed to be done in singing. Therefore, we can have many choristers a day, one to lead music, in the morning, another one in divine service or in worship service here, and then another one in the afternoon, while a conductor is the overall. So we are talking about a chorister who is leading worship in music. This one is assisting us to sing in the church. And yet a conductor is, uh, is the overall. That is why we are saying this one should be exemplary. And we are saying nobody should be uh, isolated in the music because music is worship. So they may be saying that uh, those who are isolated in worship, worshiping music should never come to church. That is out of order. So whoever is leading us in the music should get to know that we are part of worshipers as he or she is. The pride should end from there. That is why I say that the devil is very much interested in us who are leading the music. So that pride is always brought about uh, a selfishness. The dancing. You want me to talk about dancing? Yes, dancing and entertainment, yeah. Yeah, now, entertainment is found in the theater. When we come to church, we've come to worship. And it does not mean that church should be boring, but we should know who are, we are singing to. We are singing to the Lord, not to the people. Then the other issue, dancing. In the Old Testament, yes, people used to dance, but they were dancing when they're celebrating harvest, victory over the battles, but it was not in the synagogue. And I wanted to remind our viewers or my fellow students today that even women were not part of the choirs in the synagogue of the Old Testament because of their own reasons they knew in the Old Testament. But maybe they were fearing that they would be aware of the, they could celebrate. They could only sing and dance on these other ceremonies they used to have to go harvesting and maybe coming back after a battle and others. So when we are talking about dancing, dancing where? You, you, are you dancing before the Lord? Does the Lord need your dance or it is the people? And if you know that you are not praising the Lord, you are dancing for the people, dance for them because you've forgotten your savior. Okay, Pastor. Then it is a long the topic. Other it is a longer topic. We cannot cover it today. Just as I told you, that music is a very broad thing. Mm. Okay, let's try to handle a few questions then. Now, the other uh, thing is about weddings, and then uh, in the case, in the, then the case for these love songs, maybe you are single and you want to, de to dedicate some, you are loved one a song, maybe like a good or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what do you say about that? Music in weddings and then in those scenarios. Okay, let Choose me begin. Music. Okay, Moses, let me begin and then you'll come next. Uh, unless when you want to say that the weddings that we are conducting are not holy, because matrimony is holy. Any type of music that is conducted or played or presented on these events must be of great quality that God would love to hear. I want to I want to ask now a question: Does every music is every music that is sung on the wedding 
uh, uh, pleasing God. If that music does not please God, then it should not be sung by you. Moses has said there is that theatrical music. All music that is played in wedding on wedding ceremonies is theatrical. They are just appealing to people. They are not grossing to God. But if you play the music which is uh, calm and which is holy on a wedding, then people will say that we have not come to mourn. Worship is not entertainment members. Worship is worship. And all the music that is played on, mu on wedding should be that of greater honor and appealing. So we should not have entertainment on weddings. However, people do it the way they want it. This is my story. Um, I always attend wedding parties, but when it comes to the worst, I just vacate the place. Because the music that is played, is it just beats the heart. At times, even the hearts can come out. One of our pastor one day collapsed with that music. <laughs> collapsed at the wedding with that music. So we should take it seriously. For me, I no longer attend weddings, ceremonies, parties because of that type of music. And when they see me there, they just tell me, Pastor, you apologize. We are now on the wedding. We are happy. This is our day, your day, but not God's day. So Moses, you can continue from there. That is wedding. Okay. Okay. Um, marriages, I believe marriage is holy, just like holy communion. And it, I think that's why some of our marriages are collapsing in younger people, because they begin with God in the church and they collapse during the reception. But if you believe that marriage is holy, just like a holy communion is whatever is holy must be maintained to be holy. And that's what we forget. Is it right for me to dedicate a secular song to a lover since I'm a single? Follow the principles I've just told you. They will guide you. And which type of love are you following? Are you following the erotic love, the satanic love, or God is love? If it is God is love, remain godly. Don't think that if you are not godly, you'll never get married. You'll never die a single. God bless you. Okay. Ah. Thank you, Pastor. Then the other question, the other question, the other question is asking um, about how do we differentiate our songs from the rest of the gospel music? Does it mean like uh, if we listen to like Judith Babidi's song or Pastor Bugembe, it, is that bad or what do you? talk about that, because you talked about sacred music and religious music in that regard. Whoever has asked that question needs to, to play the YouTube video of this lecture, because what I was giving today was not to point out which singers to be avoided. I was actually giving guidelines that can help you to identify any song you, 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 you hear, even if I'm not there. Because me, as your teacher for the day, I'll never be there to identify for you which singer is wrong or which music is wrong. You need the skills to identify that. And this is what I said in summary. If you listen to a certain song and you see it is raising your body, not the soul, it is not uh, drawing you towards God, but it is drawing you towards entertainment. And after listening to that song, you have changed in, into the worst, not into the goodness. Just identify that song as wrong song, as wrong music, just uh, even if it was talking about God. Have I answered that? Yes, uh, thank, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's supplement on that. Okay. Uh, there is that, the, 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 the type of music you are talking about we should always try as much as possible to eliminate rock and roll music and jazz music. The type of music these people are interested in is rock and roll and jazz music. Jazz music should not be played in the church. Neither should it be applied on our 
uh, uh, our ceremonies, the marriage ceremonies, the w weddings, the, uh, the, the graduations. We should try as much as possible to eliminate that. When you play rock and jazz, that one leads to what Moses has said. It is a stimulant. People, you, you are arousing people's body to begin dancing. The, the moment you sing and you, you feel that you are lifting your, you are now beginning to stamp your feet, 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 you get to know that now you are being driven by that type of music, which is secular, which is not sacred. So we should do, do as much as we can to, 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 to deal most in sacred music other than secular music. Okay, thank you. Uh, to talk about still about the religious music, there is a certain song I once listened to. It was by a choir from a certain church, not an SDA church. But then the song was had comments like, like death was an entrance for people who died to go to heaven. Then it was naming people from that diocese who died and maybe went to heaven, all of that. That one definitely goes against our doc our doctrines. So that's what I think Pastor meant when he said not all sacred or religious music is accepted by an Adventist. So in such a way, such a song that is saying people who die go to heaven or death became like an entrance of them to go to heaven, that is definitely against our doctrines. So in that regard, by listening to the message, you can tell that it is against our doctrines. Uh, then the other question is about worship. Uh, this scenario of asking songs from from the congregation during a divine service or during song service, is it right or it is not a good practice? It is not a good practice. Why? The chorister is the preacher of the day. He chooses his verses from his Bible, and his Bible is the song book. In choosing songs, in letting the congregation choose the songs, we are also denying other people to choose the songs. That means we are hurting them. As I choose for member X and take his song, I'm refusing member Y, and therefore I'm ending up offending them. I've never seen any preacher who stands before me and he says, which verse should I read for you? It is only the chorister who knows the theme of the day and the ceremony of the day and the event of the day. If it is Holy Communion today, then he will choose the songs that help us to do Holy Communion. If it is the baptism of that day, then all the songs will be moving us towards that. It is the chorister to choose the songs and the church is there to follow. Okay, thank you. Maybe the final question I'm seeing from the chat box because of the time but is like, please tell us about how a recorded song should sound like, because some Christians do not listen to some choirs recorded songs that they have an godly rhythm. Thank you. I'm a singer and I also write music. I've ever recorded the music. I began by explaining something that bad music, bad Adventist music sometimes begins in the studio. You can take a good song and you take to a person who doesn't know the Adventist philosophy of music and it brings a heavy metal. Now, how do you identify bad instrumental or recorded music. In most cases, you'll find the instrumental is very heavy. Remember, the music is a message. Now, if I have an instrument sounding so much that I cannot pass through my message, then that music is not allowing me to communicate. It's allowing the rhythm to flow. It is a song that is, for example, there's a song that he, he tells people that he, that he, that that, that we need to repent, Jesus is coming. But followed by a rhythm that is telling me we need to dance and forget about repentance. The rhythm is telling me dance and forget about repentance, but the message is staying, saying repent because Jesus is coming back. Now, these two end up contradicting each other. Whenever you find a heavy metal or a dance hall rhythm, even if it's a choir which is singing, and the rhythm is the overlowering the body to dance and forget the message, that means that music has been recorded wrongly and it needs to be suppressed. Machines 
should be accompanying us, not us to accompany the instruments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I guess we, we have exceeded so far by eight minutes and we should have concluding remarks for today. Yeah, thanks to everyone. Thank you, Bakunzi David. He gave some comments about hymns in worship. He says maybe on hymns, asking hymns can be done the morning before song service. During song service, song pre-divine service, the songs should be selected by the ministering choirs to suit the worship. In most cases, worship songs should be the ones to be sung during this hour. Thank you so much. Yeah, Rachel is giving thanks. She, she says, thanks so much. I have learned a lot. May God bless all presenters. Thanks, friends, so much for today. I can't stay any longer here. My time is up. Okay. Yeah, she says she has to go to work. So we are also concluding. Yeah, I want to take up more questions. Maybe we can have another session next time still about music. But for today, we are going to have a concluding remarks from Mama Esther, if I told you she's back on because she was traveling, so that we can conclude the day. Esther, are you able to talk? I mean, Mama Esther? Uh, hello, Esther. can you get me? Yes, yes. Yes, I can hear you. Hello, Samuel. Can you get me yes, another can my internet if it can allow? Okay. Want to appreciate our okay. presenters, Pastor Sentongo and the Elder Mukoki for that great presentation. When you talk about music, it is very, very crucial. Actually, this is the introduction part of it. We will be studying a lot. Music alone is a cause. So, um, we will be having more seminars on music. We have a full outline of music and the youth ministry that we are developing with our colleagues and also to continue sharing with the youth leaders. So I want to appreciate them for introducing to us on how we can conduct better music in our local churches. Uh, when you come to the part of chorister, a lot has been said. My only word to the choristers is uh, just as we have been counseled and taught by our presenters, let's encourage our, our, our choristers to be smart. When I say smart, Pastor Sentongo talked about it. But my addition is on the young ladies who come to the pulpit as choristers, but they are putting on very high heeled shoes. They cannot easily stand. You know, they go shaking. They are putting on very tight skirts that they cannot easily walk, even go to the pub in the congregation. So we, we, we need to, when, when Pastor talked about the point of smartness, that area comes in. I see many of my young adult, young women walking very uncomfortable. They, they cannot stand for 10 minutes to call it that, you see? because they are putting on very high heeled issues. So my dear young ladies, as you lead out the youth in the local churches, encourage them to be gentle, with gentle shoes. How I wish you would see the shoes we put on. I mean, and uh, and uh, a lot anyway can be said about smartness. The other point, just my addition, is on the on, on, on preparing the congregation. You don't need to, to I have always seen choristers abusing people in the congregation. You're saying like you've not eaten breakfast. Our actions uh, feel out of place. You know, they have come I encourage our our youth leaders here while you're talking to the youth about choristering, smartness, let them be smart in that way and uh, just take note of 
Das ist I guess the network is poor. Mama Esther, you're breaking. The other issue is about it, but I just want to make an action. You know, sir? now it is in the middle of the song, the chorus is saying, now women keep quiet. Men sing, sing, sing. You know, you've not prepared them from the beginning. Second stanza is for women. So he also destroys worship. So if we encourage our young people to have, to be smart in organizing themselves and also preparing the congregation, hey, we shall be having better music. We will be having full presentations about music alone in December. In December, we're preparing a session, two weekends on Zoom for only music. And this one, we are going to open it up to all music people in Uganda, not only SYL. So we will talk a lot. And we hope to have our East City Director, Pastor Makalongi. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esther, Mama Esther. Yeah, I guess we are time of bad. We should close unless there is someone who, has, who wants to be. Uh, our chairperson is not on, I guess, so we should. Because I had gave Oscar a chance to pray, but I guess he's not on. I'm not seeing him in the participants list. Yeah, a volunteer to pray for us as we close. A volunteer. A volunteer to pray for us. I'm looking for someone. Someone has refused to. I couldn't say volunteer. They meet shows at random now. I'm going to choose the lady. Nagiri, Nagiri Florence. Nagiri Florence, are you able to pray for us? Nagiri Florence. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, let us humble ourselves to prayers. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we honor you. Thank you for this training. We appreciate our facilitators when you put them in your hands. Let us, whatever we have learned, put it into active so that we can be able to improve our church. Guide us throughout the week. Through Jesus Christ, I've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you for, for the word of prayer. You're welcome. I guess we are officially closing. Yeah, I'll play some music as we leave. As we leave. You can do it slowly one by one. Thank you, thank you. Mm.